What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Building Code. I'm Zach Witovich. And I'm Charlie Bertwistle. And today, we are reunited, Charlie. It's been like it's been a while since. It has been a while. I don't know where we're going to fall in the uh, the timeline of episode airings, but you, the summer mix-up. You know, everybody's busy. Yep. Everybody's moving around. Hopefully, where you're at, you're getting some beautiful weather. Here in Nebraska, we're about to hit that 99-degree, 100% humidity. Oh, yeah, I feeling think good. It's, yeah, it's 86 already, and it's still mid morning. And the most Nebraska way to open a podcast: talk about the weather. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Because everyone was wondering, yeah. what is going on in Omaha, Nebraska, yeah. from a weather standpoint. Yeah, we have to rotate hosting because of the heat. That's actually what's happening. Yeah, just can't kidding. come out today. How was your wedding in Italia? It was fantastic. A true dream come true. The only thing I would change about it would be should have scheduled a couple episodes of the podcast. That would have been like, epic from the Coliseum. You, in the Coliseum, like, yeah. Just interviewing about construction and be like, hey, walk me through how the Romans managed to do this without yeah. any sort of technology outside of just bare hands and how, without any how did without any project management tools. <laughs> Could you imagine builder friend just like renovating the Coliseum or erecting? No, I'm a saying one? building the Coliseum like the first go around. Hey. I don't want to like crack open the conspiracies here, but maybe they did. Yeah, the pyramids. Yeah, people always ask how they're built. No, they yeah. use builder yeah, BT is in, is before time. Time. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. All right, that's enough fun for today. Yeah. Let's get into the real meat and potatoes. Zach, who do we have as our guest on this very special episode uh, of the Building Code? A very special guest, uh, Morgan Moeller, construction to style out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. I actually have had the privilege of working with her team as onboarding with them. We we met them and they haven't quit yet. They have. Hey, <laughs> my churn rate looking pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so far, Morgan, if you're hearing this, like please don't please don't leave us. <laughs> Yeah, the Morgan and her entire team, they're just awesome people. They do awesome work. You know, Jamie is the the, the handcrafter. He really does amazing, um, you know, carpentry and, and remodeling. And he's got big dreams, big ambitions. Actually, just was with them in the Contract Coalition Spring Edition 2024 in Minneapolis. And uh, just really kind of see, like, not only their vision, but, you know, the way that they treat other people. And, and it's just amazing you're gonna hear it right away and just the way that morgan approaches life and business and the people around her and i've just learned a lot from her already i've heard a ton about morgan yeah. so i'm very uh excited to meet her finally yeah whenever i feel like i bring you into the fold people are always like why don't you send him why do you send zach <laughs> and charlie's just way a way better time and that's probably true uh but the biggest thing that we're going to talk about today charlie is what uh, today, we're going to be talking about brand strategy. Yeah. So uh, I've noticed the number of episodes we've done around brand has gone up, I think, twofold. One, because it's very, very important for construction businesses. Two, because I think Courtney finds a lot of these guests and loves brand and sets them up. But the good news is Zach and I also love talking about it because it is the absolute backbone of your business and your customer facing, how you get more leads, your experience with the customers, your reviews, everything kind of funnels through your brand. And talking to Courtney before this, Morgan's best in class. And so very excited to talk to her. It should be a great episode. We're going to learn a lot. So let's get her in here. Hey, Morgan, welcome to The Building Code. It's your first time on the podcast, but we're great friends here at Builder Trend with Construction to Style. How are you today? Good. Thanks for having me, you guys. I'm so excited. Super pumped to have you. I've been hearing all about you from Zach and Courtney um, and everyone else, it seems like, in the Builder Trend headquarters. Uh, but for those that are not fortunate enough to know you, we love to start these off with just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your company, and kind of how you got into construction. All right. So I'm Morgan Molitor, along with my husband, Jamie. We run Construction of Style. We started our business or our brand back in 2012. He was, my husband went to school to be a contractor, um, went for carpentry, graduated during the recession, worked for a waterproofing company commercial. Started flipping homes when he'd get laid off in the winter time, and then we were just dating at the time, and I was just blown away by his talents. Started documenting what he was doing on the blog. We started a blog, Construction of Style, and then slowly but surely, people started reaching out to us, started remodeling their homes. Um, my background was fashion merchandising and marketing, and I quickly jumped into it with him, and one thing led to another. Um, got married. So we technically started our company before we were married, which is insane now. <laughs> worked out well for us. Um, and uh, yeah, quickly, uh, yeah, got married, had three kids. Uh, after our second son was born, I was like, I cannot work 
corporate full time, plus we doing construction of style full time. We had employees on our team by that time and jump ship went full, you know, full time with him in 2015. And then, or sorry, 2015 is when Jamie went full time, jumped his um, job. And then 2017, I joined the train. And then since then, we've been doing design build anywhere from, you know, we've done a few custom home builds, but otherwise we focus on additions, remodeling. And then during all that time too, I was prior as working at a digital marketing agency. So when I came to C2S full time, I just started leaning more into like the brand partnerships, affiliate marketing, ad revenue, content creation, all that kind of stuff. So we also have a full-time business, like running our content side and making revenue through there. And people started reaching out, like, how do you do that? Or how, you know? And so from that, I started doing workshops. I started offering courses. I started offering um, mentorship. And we launched another company called The Online Media, where you know, we focus that on other people, content creation, mm -hmm. blogs, SEO, website builds. And then what else? We also have a nonprofit called the Resilience to Reform that gives those a uh, second chance who are resilient and have reformed their life. Um, my brother was incarcerated for, for eight years. And so I've lived that life, like bringing my kids to a federal prison and started sharing about that more publicly. And people are like, I'm going through the same thing. And I would never tell anyone. And I was like, you know, why not? Like life's hard and all that kind of stuff. So truly at construction style, like we pride ourselves on being an open book. Like what you see is what you get. We're very transparent when it comes to pricing, when it comes to our family lifestyle, our team lifestyle, basically everything. So that's kind of about us. Yeah. They're a lot of fun to hang out with Charlie. It's, I wish you could have been there, man. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things that when you meet, uh, the team I've been working with Kayla and, and Topher and everyone is there's a, a really awesome culture that you've built. And I don't know, how do you, how do you do it all? You've got three companies, you got three kids, you've got a, you know, a team of people. Like I'm always just enamored with the ability for people to do so much. And I'm over here, like working a corporate job, like thinking it's hard, you know, yeah. like we want to talk to you, of course, about the, you know, your brand strategy and how you've grown these businesses. But like, I think something people really are interested in is like that, that growth mindset. We talk about that a lot on the podcast. Like, did you mean to do all this or is it an accident? And like, what was kind of that, that story as far as like, how did this happen? Like what, yeah. what was like your, 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 um, your motivation? Yeah. I always think, I mean, I'm just a very intuitive person and energy person, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I really lean into that. So when I get an opportunity or when I meet someone that I'm like, oh, there's something there, like something could be really cool. Like I lean into it and I try to figure out like what it is. Um, I feel like I meet cool people just like you guys that it opens new opportunities. It opens new doors. I'm always, yeah, just kind of intrigued on. I just have a growth mindset, an entrepreneurial mindset. Both Jamie and I, our parents you know, ran their own companies. So we grew up in households that, you know, we saw our parents working in extremely hard and I saw my parents working and they owned a restaurant. So like around the clock, mm -hmm. I was raised in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Like that's where our family dinners were. And so, yeah, I think even with like the beginning of construction of style and my background, like I didn't think I'd be doing design for clients. And also when I met Jamie, I was like, this is fun. And I leaned into it. And, you know, his goal is to be a custom home builder. And all of a sudden I was like, let's launch this blog. <laughs> and all of a sudden we started doing content and that kind of led to another opportunity. And throughout our whole journey, yeah, it's just like meeting people. It's bringing on the right partners, just like you guys. Um, we're very, I don't want to say selective, but it's just when we meet someone, even when it comes to a brand, a tool we use, a product that we're putting into clients' homes, um, our clients have led us to cool and new opportunities. Like we know immediately if it's a yes or a no, if they're like our people. Um, and we just, yeah, we're like, yep, we're in. And when we're in, we're like hundred percent in and we think fast. And then if we make a mistake, we learn from it and keep moving. I don't like to dwell on things we've screwed up on. Um, and yeah, it's just keeping that positive mindset, even when things are not going good. And Jamie and I struggle with that every day, even like this morning. We wake up and he's like, we're going to be late to our client meeting. And I was like, 
not with that attitude. I was like, my attitude is we're going to be on time. And I was like, get that, check it out the door. And he's like, oh my Lord. (laughs) So it's just that constant, like just staying, moving forward, being positive. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And and clearly it's worked for you. An incredibly impressive resume. And I feel like we could go down 20 different Mm -hmm. avenues to talk about. Uh, But Zach and I are going to try to stick to our uh, questions that our marketing team put together for us here. And the point of this episode is creating that effective brand strategy. So something that you mentioned a couple times already is that this all kind of started with a blog. And I think a lot of we've had a few different people on the podcast to talk about brand. And I feel like the common pushback we get is we don't really know where to start or we can't, we don't know about social media and SEO and stuff like that. And the guests that we've had have always said, you know, just start somewhere, pick something and start with it. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about your evolution of what did that blog look like and how did that kind of transform? What was kind of the next step of that and the next step? And how did you get from one blog to kind of the media empire that you have today? Yeah, I would say it's so hard to like to rewind back to 10 years ago or whatever long it was. Cause it's just like what I did then, what I do now today, I don't know. But <laughs> the one thing I would do is I think sometimes too, especially as a brand and whether it's your brand or you're working for another brand, like we always overcomplicate things and we always overthink things. Whereas I'm like, just right. And that's what I did in the beginning too, is I just started documenting what Jamie was doing to this home. Like he had bought this investment property. I started one blog entry on, you know, how he was taking down this load bearing wall, what he was doing, the cost that went into it. And that was a blog post. I did another blog post on like the backsplash, you know, what he was installing, why. And it just started creating this storyline. And so I think for everyone in the housing industry, you have so many storylines to tell. And it's very rare that I see, like we have, we just have so much content to share and not a lot of people are sharing all of their content and not a lot of people are even sharing any of the content. Right. And so I'm just like, start, start with one project, start with one storyline, start with your team and write. And the first thing I always do is I just truly write from my heart and I just, just I type so I'm not writing but I'm like typing away of you know what it is and then I let it sit and then I'll come back to it and I'll refine it and I give myself about three revisions before I have to hit publish and I also always am a big time blocker so I only have so much time to write this article and then I'm going to put out to the universe could I sit there and go through it over and over and over and make sure it's SEOed correctly and it has the right tone and the right links and all this stuff yes and then it would probably take you 30 hours for one piece of content to get live Whereas I just have this rule where I'm like, I don't want to spend more than three hours on this piece of content. Otherwise, yes, then it's not going to be an ROI. Like you just need to get the content out there and get it going. I'm also a huge fan of owning your content because I think we all see like so many people online, they put all their money, projects, everything just in Instagram and that's it. And we see it all the time where people's Instagrams get shut down all the time right because we don't own instagram we don't own any social media platform so just like that they don't like the politics you said they don't like a word you used um the other day i used a word i didn't realize and they shut our instagram down for 24 hours to make sure we weren't you know and for a second i was like what the heck because i keep all that kind of stuff offline but then i was like oh my gosh i left a comment on someone else's just like using kind of a joke word you know just like a cliche word that people would use and it literally alerted instagram and jamie texted me right away because he got the alert and he's like what are you doing and i was like i didn't even think twice about like my comment (laughs) but with all that to be said i'm like when you're creating content make sure you're putting it in a place that you own so i'm a huge advocate of having your content your storyline on your website and owning your website don't have a rented space website and then from there using social media platforms to push your content. So using it as an arm, Mm. an extension, right? Like you guys, podcasts, amazing, right? Like you own this content, you own the articles, you own all of these assets, and then you use social media to help leverage it. So, um, but yeah, to not overcomplicate it, I always say, just start writing, have that storyline on your website and start there. Because even this morning, client job site, I immediately was referencing some projects and I pulled up our website to show them what I was referencing. 
I wasn't pulling up social media and scrolling, scrolling, scrolling to try to find this one thing I was referencing. Then I knew exactly where I could go on our website, share the storyline. They can go back there. They can dig deeper into all the other platforms. Um, but then all that too, they'll go down a rabbit hole, start seeing who we are as a company, a team, our brand voice. That was a long answer to your question. No, that's a great Fantastic. answer. And I, I also, real quick before we move on, I love the the way you started and the way you phrased it. Of I, I just typed what we were doing or what he was doing at the time. I think a lot of times people have mental blocks of mm -hmm. like, I don't know what to write. What would I blog about? What do I post about? I was like, yeah. what did you do today? Mm -hmm. Just talk about that. Cause there are literally millions of other people that are going through the same exact yeah. experience in the same exact space. Just share your version of it. Yeah. Well, I think for what I say too is, um, what did you do today is a great one, but also like, what are, what questions are your clients asking you? Because mm -hmm. I know they're asking you the same questions and you're repeating the same answers. So create a resource where you don't have to keep repeating that same answer and then add to it later, like write the article, but then add in a video later, add in photos later. Like we're constantly going back and updating content based on new projects that we put out that are relevant to that information. So start with by answering your client questions that they're asking you. Yeah, I was thinking too, same lane as Charlie when it comes to like, oh, no one would read that. It's like, yeah, but no one would, you would never know what people would read if you never do it. And so exactly. you're better off putting it out there and seeing what you get yeah. and really trying to experiment and seeing, yes. you just never know. You really don't know. Yeah. And if you hold it to yourself or you're, you're held up on the what ifs, you'll never actually sure. do anything or accomplish anything. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's really great advice, Morgan. And you do a lot of this type of education at the contract coalition where you talk about these things. It's funny watching a lot of our customers kind of like you could see the wheels turning like oh like it, it's really not that hard and it just is that type of education that little push or yeah. a pioneer someone that's done it to be able to say like i can do this too right what are some of the other things in a brand strategy like for a construction business that you teach people or share with others that can maybe level them up you know but you got to start somewhere but what are some of the other things that are really part of a strong brand strategy for someone that wants to grow their construction business or any business? I think, oh man, that's like, yeah. Well, in our courses and our workshops, which we're actually changing right now, I'm working on changing all that to a membership base so that people can sign up and get any of the content cool. that they want. That's really yeah. cool. I know. Thank you. I'm like a month behind. So I'm talking to my Well, you have nothing going on, Morgan. I feel like, oh yeah, another great project, Morgan. Where do you have a time machine? How do you do? I just cannot. I'm like, I need to just time block and get it done because mm -hmm. I know how important it is. And I'm like, I have all the assets. I just gotta like move it over into my the membership mm -hmm. style. But yeah, to answer that, I you know, we chat about just like Pinterest marketing. I think that is a huge untapped potential in home, home industry. Pinterest and Google stories are like my top two that hardly anyone's on. And I'm like, people will say, oh, my clients aren't on Pinterest. Oh my, like, what are Google stories? My clients aren't there. And I'm like, your clients are on Google. Think about how often even we're in the industry and I'm Googling, I'm Googling stuff every day about the home industry and we're in the industry and Google leads you like Pinterest pops up immediately. Google stories pops up immediately. So I think those are two like huge untapped markets that are so easy to incorporate into your marketing and so we teach stuff like that or share stuff like that um another great thing too is just like when it goes back to your brand and your identity i think it's so important for to figure out who you want as your brand voice and i always say like you know have this avatar think of an avatar for your brand voice think of an avatar for your ideal client and with your team or yourself or your leadership team, like whiteboard, storyboard it out. Like, who is this person? What do they do? What do they like to do as hobbies? You know, just like get into the nitty gritty details and then develop those people. And so what I always think with marketing, and I struggle with this for a long time because I was starting to be the brand voice and the brand face and all these things. And I was like, I didn't want that because I'm like, it's me and Jamie and our team and I'm very team focused. And I'm like, when you hire us, like the first person you're interacting is with is not me. You know, I'm a lot more so behind the scenes and it's Kayla and then it's Topher on job sites. And so I struggled with that for a while as I tried to like remove myself. 
And then after listening to podcasts and reading articles and surrounding myself with brilliant minds, I realized like, no, you can like pick that person and maybe it's not the owner. Maybe it's someone else on the team. Cause maybe that's not someone, you know, that wants to, that's comfortable, you know, showing up and doing these things. Um, and so anyway, I just like let that go. And I was like, no, I'm, you know, cause what, again, what we were talking about, um, a second ago, Zach is just like, data will prove itself. So you don't know what's going to work and what doesn't work, but look at the data. And so <laughs> Kayla was the one was like, Morgan, stop fighting this because every time you're showing up and you're talking, like it's working and those are our best performing. And, you know, she's like the data showing. And I was like, fine. <laughs> so I let it go. <laughs> and then just started showing up more. And so what I've learned is like, a lot of times people, I think as owners too, you might think, oh, I should hire, you know, hire this. And granted, we do have a media company, but I'll be the first to say, if you can, like you need to be showing up. Like if you want to get to the next level in marketing, you got to show up. And so what I always think is, a lot of times people think that's the first thing, like let that go, hire someone else, like hire an intern. When I hear that, I just cringe. Cause I'm like, that's the last person that you should be trusting in with your marketing. Like this is a big deal. Like this is your mothership. <laughs> it's like, and all of that could go to the wayside. If you put someone that's um, uneducated and doesn't know your brand well as that. And so I always think that's the first thing you should offload other things within your company that your leadership team can take over for you so that you're able to show up. And it's not, you know, because people will be like, oh, this is so easy. Someone else can do it. And it's not about that. It's about showing up for who your brand, you know? And so your brand voice is important. Your brand face is important. Your brand just as much, just as important as your brand logo, your colors, your fonts, all that, if not more important, because again, that's going to be repeating from your social media to your website to what trickles down to your team. Like they all now have instilled qualities and characteristics, you know, that I'm helping to drive home or tone of voice or the lightheartedness or, um, yeah. I can't wait for Courtney to hit me with the, you know, marketing is the mothership of builder trends, I know. you know, it's, That's just, the exact it's over here in the studio. Too. Like, oh, oh no, Morgan. What do we, it's no. right, Courtney. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, they're gonna have T-shirts yeah. within the week. Stickers, mugs, like this is this is the uh, Morgan. Yes, don't you guys agree though? No, oh, I totally do. And like, I, I like, kind of got that like, uh like feeling of total alignment because it is so important. Yes, for leadership, like even, right? To it like show, like, yeah, like yeah. for everyone to kind of be like involved in that type of understanding because it does create that, um, that perception that everybody's kind of on the same page it just makes things yes. work better when yeah. you do those yes. things everything flows more naturally and that's what's like the people who understand that so adeptly like you morgan like you have to make the time it's a choice yeah. but when you do yes. it what you get from it by being like right. really present in the front side of the client facing and the way that people make decisions it's like it is a it is a human decision they want to know yeah. who the people are that they're working with right even if you're not on the job site that isn't necessarily right. why they're deciding to go with you. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the the piece that really stuck out to me was just the kind of consistency. Something we talk about a lot at Builder Trend is just expectation setting. So we've been pretty focused, at least in this interview, on kind of the front end side of like lead gen and brand awareness and stuff like that. But that same voice that you're setting and expectations and brand that you're setting carries through the entire customer experience. So then on the back end, when you come time for client reviews and the trust and credibility of how that project went, it was seamless. It wasn't, I was working with a different, I thought mm -hmm. I was gonna be working with a different company, then I signed the contract and it's completely different. Like it needs yes. to be a, a holistic kind of customer journey from start to finish with that exactly. same consistency and credibility throughout. Yeah, exactly. And the, like even, again, I was chatting with Kayla on the phone coming back from a client meeting today and we were actually just talking about that as in like our team as a whole showing up to this job site this morning and that we're trying to win a good project for. And she just reminded me, she's like, we showed up all of us, like who we are, like, this is who we are. Like we're laid back, we're carefree, but we also care. And she's like, that's all we can do. And we're all showing up on the same way, the same level, the same energy, the same um excitement you know and I was just like oh my gosh that was just such a great reminder and I was just kind of laughing to myself because I'm like here you're telling me what I should be telling you <laughs> <laughs> I've hopefully instilled that in her you know and it's the 
it's the trust to do that too, like to let things go as an owner and to let your team have that act as an owner because now they truly are like running our company just as I and Jamie would be running the company. And it's really cool to see that too. Well, it sounds like we're going to have to set up a, a second episode with you on just company culture. And yeah. Shared leadership because gosh, we get to go down that avenue for another hour. Morgan's got a, a great line, which is your vibe is your tribe. Yeah, oh, your there you go. Your tribe. Yep. And t-shirt. Oh, yeah, that's the t-shirt <laughs> line. But she said that in Minnesota at contractor coalition. I was like, I love that. That is, it's so simple and short. I think the messages that convey a lot been very short words are the ones that really like are powerful and you can just feel it working with your team and it does become part of your brand too. Like I think your customers probably experience that as well. They know Kayla from the front end. They know that you'll be in and out. They'll know that Jamie's like handcrafting the project and making sure yeah. the design is really on tight and that the, the product being delivered is really, really high quality. So like yeah. it makes all the other stuff. One, it makes it fun because you're delivering something you can be proud of, but two, it also just makes everything else kind of really work. And yes, that's like the dream come true. Right. Yeah. It is. So, you know, some other things that we were kind of looking at, um, you mentioned, you know, strategies around trying to like build additional revenue and things like Pinterest and Google. Um, what is kind of the, the business strategy on there? Are you thinking is, is the construction business, the primary kind of focus, or are you using the, the additional revenue streams or additional strategies to kind of drive business? Like, or is it, are you, do you treat them all kind of separately? I think people in construction may not necessarily have the same like awareness that these other tools can be something that helps boost their, their bottom line can help build right. business. Like what does that, um, kind of workflow look like for you? So I would say our, like our focus always is our con contracting company. Um, that's where we do that. We focus our time, attention, revenue. Like we don't want that going anywhere, but, and now we've gotten to a point where we keep it all separate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have ad revenue, we have affiliate marketing, we have brand collaborations, brand sponsorships. Um, and then we have these memberships, courses, workshops. And so we keep all that separate into its own, you know, separate entities mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. But I would say, we started figuring out like very quickly one through ad revenue because we have our content living on our website, like how easy it is. We're already making the content. So how easy it is now when we get traffic, we're, you know, we collect a monthly check from our uh, network company or ad network company, which is Mediavine for us. And it's just like, who wouldn't want that extra, you know, $5,000 a mm -hmm. month. And so it's just on the content you're already making. And then with affiliate marketing, like we just started, you know, people are always asking what's in these homes, what are you wearing? You know, but I think a lot of times people think like, oh, it's so fashion focused. And I'm like, no, like at Contractor Coalition, I shared our live stats. I share it in our courses, but we, the bulk of our revenue from affiliate marketing is all in the home industry because people want to know what is that light fixture? What is the flooring? What is the paint color? Like mm -hmm. all of that. And so I'm like, you're sharing the information anyways why not be making money from it, you know? So whether that's on your website with links, like all of our links for the most part, if they're linkable for ad re or not ad revenue, affiliate marketing revenue, like it is linked through either Amazon or reward style, which is like to know it, or a lot of companies have their own affiliate marketing tool, which Builder Trend does. So anytime I'm talking about Builder Trend, use the affiliate marketing tool. Like any apps we're using, tools we're using too, we're asking them if they don't have it listed on their website, which normally at the bottom of every website, I'll say apply for our brand ambassador program. Um, so I'll ask them if they don't have that. So anytime we're referencing anything, I'm always like, let's get an affiliate link because that is a huge <laughs> revenue driver for us. And um, I could go into all the tools and stuff, mm -hmm. but one very easy is you run it's a second step, but you run it through URL genius, it's called, but it basically tracks people for 90 days. And so, you know, I'll look at our stats and I'll be like, wow, I've never talked about any of these products, but we got all the affiliate marketing revenue from it because then they're going on and buying their stuff that whatever it is, it's tracking and we're getting the revenue from it. So I'm like, when things are that simple to set up, yes, it takes time. Yes, it's something more to do, but to me, I'm like, you're already doing it. You're already sharing it. Why not create additional revenue for it? 
And that would be an easy thing to hire an intern for. <laughs> there you go. And so there's yeah, nuance. So, there's internship and marketing for yeah. certain things, but yeah. not for your entire exactly. brand strategy. Yeah. 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 So I would say that it's just so simple. And, you know, I was laughing too, because I shared this at Contractor Coalition, but the day before I like just looked in our account to, you know, pull up some stats or whatever. And I was like, oh, someone's buying like concrete offline. Like never would you think, right? And I remember Jamie being like, I started linking tools. Like we have a couple blog posts on his favorite tools. And he was like, I would never go to this place to buy my tools. And I'm like, Jamie, I understand that, but we're not, this is not for contractors. We're not selling to contractors. I'm like, this is for the typical homeowner that is coming to our site for resources or guides. And I'm like, and guess what? They're buying their tools off these places. <laughs> so right. I'm like, let's make some money from it. Um, so I just think too, again, not going back to content and getting stuck. It's like, just anything you're doing already, just start sharing the links or sign up for the affiliate programs and slowly start sharing. And then again, the stats will speak for itself. You'll start to see revenue and you'll be like, oh my gosh, why didn't I start this sooner? Um, so yeah. I love that. And we're getting close to time here, but everything that you're hitting on is just so impactful and valuable for me. And I'm not in construction or marketing. So I would have to imagine that people listening to this will find it even more beneficial. Uh, you've referenced these workshops a few different times. Are those things that like anyone can sign up for or what do those look like? I'd love to promo those a bit too as well. Yeah. So on constructionstyle.com, we have a tab on our website. It says courses. So that is where our courses are. And then under there too, we have workshops. It's on a drop down. And so each month I have a different topic that I talk to. These are all via Zoom and webinar. And so you can take the workshop. Um, for example, we have one on Pinterest marketing for three weeks and it's three Fridays for one hour. I record wow. all of them. So if people can't make them live, you can get the recording in. Those are like 30 bucks to join. And then I share everything, all the assets, the downloads, all that. But um, depending when this airs, all this will be focused or moving into a membership platform. So again, it will be right on our website. Um, I'm still going to keep the workshops because that will, you know, talk about gen lead generation sales funnel. Like that will be a sales funnel into the membership. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but the memberships too are going to be very affordable, probably under 20 bucks a month. Um, and I'm going to have all the courses, all the assets, all the downloads that we reference talk about in this library. So people can take them at their own time and have access to it. And then I'll stay up to date as I learn new algorithms and trends and all that I'll be, I'll be updating them. I love that. Well, we will definitely link that in our show notes. Um, I, otherwise I think that about does it for today. Zach, you got anything else? Yeah, Morgan, you just, I can't wait to catch up with you again when you've got another project, you know, somehow that you've <laughs> managed to fit into your, your schedule. Uh, it was a pleasure having you on. It was great catching up and you're just an nice. amazing entrepreneur and we're really lucky to have you on today. Thank you so much for coming on The Building Code. Yeah, thank you. It was great to meet you, Morgan. We just had Morgan, co-founder of Construction to Style delivered as usual. We covered a ton of topics, brand strategy, education in the industry, business processes we kind of touched all of it how to build culture yeah a lot to unpack i think that always calls for another episode because Absolutely. we end up you know kind of almost feels like chasing our tail sometime trying to get to all the great content yeah we don't want to we don't shoot a shot all at once so charlie what were your takeaways on kind of what we talked about with morgan especially on the brand strategy and yeah some of the well the, the first yeah the first thing that sucked out to me is if you are dating someone and you're curious if you should marry them or not, your first step should be to start a business. And if you can get through that, then you know, great advice, yeah. foolproof. Yeah, exactly. I don't see any way that goes for like, <laughs> yeah, well, I just roll those dice, baby. What do you got to lose? Love is love. Love is love. No, the main thing that stuck out to me was just how, I guess, I think a lot of people don't do brand or marketing or social media because they don't necessarily know where to start. They don't do a lot of different things because you don't know where to start. So I thought her perspective on just dive in, take the first step, take the first step, talk about what you're doing, talk about what questions people are asking you and grow and scale from there. It was a really interesting perspective hearing from her who has built this, you know, very, very successful 
media enterprise to rewind time and talk through where they started out and how they got to where they are today. Because I think she essentially kind of laid out the roadmap and the playbook for anybody, regardless mm -hmm. of if you're in the construction industry or not, on how to start establishing your brand. So I might sign up for one of her workshops and start going through that um, because that stuff is just fascinating to me. So that's really what stood out to me was just you don't have to go from zero to perfect. And there is a small incremental iterative kind of roadmap that you can take to get there. And the first step is literally just taking the first step. And I think that's true of a lot of things. It's just really easy to talk yourself out of things. Mm -hmm. And so finding that courage, that strength to kind of start something is usually the most difficult part is the anguish of doing it. And then I think in construction, you know, funny enough, we've had many guests come in and like, well, I don't spend on marketing. Marketing's not important to me. Yeah. I don't need marketing. And so there is this kind of like philosophy uh, disagreement in construction about why it matters versus why yeah. it doesn't. And there's, I think that's normal in a lot of industries to have kind of different perspectives on the business processes. And it's probably not just even a construction thing, but it is interesting because she went as far as to say like marketing is your mothership, which is yeah. the, you know, the lifeblood of what your business is all about, what you can achieve. And other people are like, I don't want to invest in it, but ironically, that's kind of their brand. You know, yeah, like it, everybody, you can't really get run that's from it. That's a good point. That's how yeah. I always think about it. You can't run from your brand, whether you're actively sh polishing or honing it versus like passively having one. Yep. I think there's optimizations in there that little things like starting a blog can make a big difference that then leads to this more mature brand. Yeah. Everyone has a brand, yeah. whether you know it or not. Exactly. Do you want people, do you want to control your brand is exactly. the difference. And I think people like Morgan are a little bit ahead of their time. Whereas uh, in lots of communities, you have well-established construction companies, but there's like different kind of forms of them. And some of these newer age touching other things besides construction, becoming multi LLC kind of conglomerates almost in terms right. of what they do. They're really impressive. And I think that's kind of where we'll start seeing more and more of the industry go over time as, you know, people come into the industry from corporate America, because that's what you also see is like the family run businesses versus the kind of people who had a different career and came into it, met someone in construction, merged their skill sets right. together. And that's what's great about getting to talk to different varieties of customers. You learn something from everybody. Everybody's Absolutely. got something to contribute and there's a, a pantheon of knowledge that comes out of it. Um, but you know, for Morgan, it's just really impressive because I really don't know how she does all that Yeah, with the same hours in the week that you and I have. Well, the good news, Zach, is if you did want to learn more about how she does all this, Dollar Trend does <laughs> Amazing have segue. a Behind the Business series mm. featuring Morgan and her mm -hmm. husband, Jamie, who obviously, you know, from the interview, started their business over a decade ago uh, with only cash in their pockets. And it's a five-part series, and they go kind of through the journey of starting a construction business from the ground up, and how Builder Trend kind of helped them scale that. So, if you want to learn more, if this was just a teaser, and you're curious on like what the right steps are to take, we literally have a series about what the right steps are to take. So we'll make sure to link that in the show notes. Uh, Morgan is great; she lived up to the hype that you and Courtney um, set up for her, um, and we definitely got to get her on for another interview. Yeah, don't forget she mentioned too. If you want to learn directly from Morgan, she puts stuff on her website where you can learn from her, which I think is also really, really cool that she takes the time to also spread her knowledge to other people. Because I think in a lot of ways, if you're able to get a little further in the path, you can learn from others who got there and then you can get there a little quicker. So yeah. check out Morgan herself and her content on her website. Uh, and you know she will be more than happy to spend time kind of helping you grow your brand. So thank you so much for listening to Building Code. Another great conversation, another one of the books, another one with Charlie and Zach, the classic combo <laughs> of the building code. I was just going to say thank you so much, Zach, for hosting another episode of Building Code. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Until next time, I'm Charlie Bertelsel. And I'm Zach Watovich. See you. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel for exclusive content brought to you by Builder Trend.